Hi, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jack, and today I'm going to be talking about Big Brother Canada, as you can see on my hat, sort of. Um, but I'm going to talk about that this show that's currently being put on a hiatus, general, whatever that's going to mean right now. I'm talking in this corner, in the middle of my room, because I want to talk about this show, why I love this show, why I love this franchise of the Big Brother Can uh, Big Brother Network that we have with Big Brother UK, US, so on and so forth. But I want to talk about my experiences with the Big Brother Canada franchise and why I love it, why I am so sad to see it go right now, and I hope that it comes back in the 2019 season. Um, and let me tell you why I love it and why I'm so passionate about this uh, TV series, being a proud Canadian, being someone who loves watching reality TV and everything, staying up till 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning watching the feeds because really, that's all I really want to do. Uh, I hack into the American feeds, get the Canadian feeds, and it's it's a show that I love. Like I, I've started watching the UK c series because of the Canadian series. They, what I love about the American series was as I started watching it in season three. I watched the two premiere episodes, didn't really like, didn't, wasn't really interested in it, till I got to season three. Loved the steampunk theme, loved the show, and I realized how much I screwed up in not judging the book by its cover. So I delve into season two, delve into season one. After season three ended, loved it and. It's an amazing show because it's not like Big Brother US where it's just bullshit and buffoonery. No, it's actual genuine moments. They cast house guests that know and have a great story to them. You see, um, that, like I, I feel like so they bring Nikki and Tim in to the international house guests from season four. Huge, huge people to bring in the house. You're bringing two people that have never played in the traditional North American format. And it was phenomenal to see them play. You see, Tim has a very strong social game, yet Nikki just didn't really know what she was doing, but loved, um, was, uh, it, I love her because of her blow-ups and her uh, buffooneries that she caused in the house. Gameplay-wise, that's a whole other situation, but I love Nikki because of her blow-ups and everything. Getting me into U the UK ser series and making me passionate about these three franchises that I watch, US, UK, and Canada. And then there's Tim, who's this huge social mastermind who loves this game, loves the whole social aspect of it. He is a king at persuasion, influence, and understanding people's motives. And I love that because watching his season in Australia completely different than the UK or US and everything like that but it made me love the show so much more it made me love the Canadian season and everything having the will and the ability to bring international house guests onto the show made this series this Canadian season so much better than the American than the uh, UK because they were willing to try something that turned out to their benefit now Moving forward, I have a whiteboard right there. That's why I have like a bunch of cliff notes of why I love this show. Um, Orissa Cox. Shout out to Orissa. Oh my goodness. She is not just a host. She is a fan. And that's what makes this show so great. Is that she is willing to go and talk on Twitter about the house guests in the house. She's not afraid of her opinion. She will talk to you about... The great moment in the house. She's not just a fan. She lives in the lifestyle that we all as super fans are have. And I think that's what's great about it. She's not afraid to go on like reality recaps or rap. And talk about why he, she loves Big Brother. And why she loves the Canadian version. And that's why I feel it's great is like when you have a host that loves the show as much as I do and as much as anybody in this fandom does it's it, it's what makes the show better because when you have a super fan hosting the show you know it's done right because she's this passionate sweet person I've been to the live tapings in Toronto great experience saw Christine get evicted that's a legendary moment if this show comes back on I will love to go back to a, a live taping and suggest and recommend that 
you all come to the live taping, see Arissa, see all the former house guests, and it's a, it's an amazing experience because when you go to the live taping, you're not just there, you're seeing the set. I remember seeing the BB can grand for all it was. I remember seeing Arissa come out in that 50 style dress that she was wearing, the gold and the black and the white. Beautiful dress. It's on my Twitter. Um, and it's just, you can't underestimate that moment when you're watching this show, when you're watching it with Arissa, with Peter Brown, with uh, Sarah Hanlon, legends who I love from this show. Remembering seeing, um, uh, remember seeing Christine walk out of that house and think, wow. So I remember seeing them all vote for, uh, to evoke Christine in week number two. Arissa taking the um, the crowd's audience, like the audience's um, poll of who thinks is going to go out in that week. And it's such a great week. It's such a great opportunity. That's why I love this show because when you, it's not just a, um, it's not just a show. It's not just something boring, simple or whatever. No, it's an experience. It's a lifestyle that we all have to live um, in order to enjoy and experience, like the house guests in the house experience the craziest, wackiest twists that in America would probably never happen, in the UK would probably never happen. So it makes us uh, such a great separation from the American and the Can uh, the UK series because it's we make our own twists. We had our first triple eviction. Where we had Willow and Kevin leave the house in season three, we had Dre and Will um, leave in season five. Triple evictions were just a huge, great addition for a twist, and I just that's why I love it because you have these great moments um, that you, you can rant about for hours. Um, I, I met I met a f great friend that I have right now, like um, uh, I, I I've. I've been so happy and so proud to have her as someone who I can talk to about Big Brother, about Survivor, about all these reality shows that we watch. And we can talk about it. We can talk about the UK series. We can talk about anything that has to do with our lives. And I've grown such a great relationship. I'm so happy that I've gotten to form it with her because... It's made me understand the show on such a different level when you're talking to someone face to face rather than on Twitter or then on Reddit and everything like that. And I'm so happy that um, I've had that experience and I'm so happy that I've had the opportunity to talk here on my phone, on Instagram. Um, you can see I am sweating. I am a hot mess right now. Okay, shout out to um, the weather, which is hot even though it's raining right now, as you may hear. Um, hopefully you don't. Um, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, but yeah, like she, it's such a great experience. Like I never knew about the live tapings until I met her. And the way I met her was she was wearing a Big Brother Canada shirt, and I'm like, yo, how in the hell did you get that shirt? And she's like, oh, I went to the tapings. And I'm just like, yo. And that's how our friendship began. Two weeks before we were about to graduate in grade 12. Because it's like, what do you, what else do you do? Um, and I'm so happy for that. Um, and then what else? We have challenges. The challenges, the set design, the house alone. Beautiful. I want to give a shout out to anybody who had to do anything to build the house. And like, construction, all the challenges. Like, they're insane. It's amazing to see that they put so much effort, so much love into the house, the sets, and the challenges. And it's beautiful. Like, having this, having the black hole, having the, um, what else? Having the um, BB Can Odyssey, which was something that was just beautiful. Having the steampunk, um, like, house in Season 3. The halfway have-not room in Season 2. Um... Having the uh, vault in season three and like the secret room in season two and like the house in season one, which was like yeah, a bit quirky, but that was just that's just how it is. Like these sets, these um, this house is phenomenal. You can see how um, 
it's so different from the Americans, but I, it's something that I love. Um, it, it was just like it, it's it's up to UK type um, of like proportions where it's like they change each season or each year they change the house for a different um, like for a different cast. So um, and that's what made it so much better. It's like <laughs> you never know what you, the twists are. You never know what the um, the ch changes are because it all depends on the house. Um, what else? We have uh, just the house guests alone. I have to give a shout out to them because you know what? You have these legends now in the Big Brother Canada history books. You have um, Netta, John Party, um, Kevin, Dre, William, um, all the house guests. Liza Stanton, who I never really got the uh, like season one of Big Brother Canada until I watched her series about it and her recapping this season on YouTube. So thankful for that. So thankful for um, like everything um, that's happened. Like I want this show back because I still want that to happen. I still want house guests to enter that house, have the opportunity that all the legends in the past um, have had. Because it's what makes this show great. It's, it's not just the house. It's not how the house looks. It's the people in the house and how they interact in the house. Allison in season two. Um, being the house guest nominee. Like, like the um, house guest that entered into that house halfway through. And had to wiggle her way to the end. Or however, however far she made it. I'm sorry. I'm like... Yeah. Um, like Wake Up Canada, you have like Adele from Big Brother Canada too. Like these great genuine moments is like that you never get in a season of US, never get in a season of um, UK because it's Canada. We're just a bunch of nice human people doing shit. Um, like you, like you have to think about it. Kenny coming out to Sarah in season two. Having this emotional bond, emotional connection that really, although was beautiful, sealed their fate in the double eviction, and it like these great moments that like I love and I cherish because it's you never get that when you're in the American season or um because it's what makes Canada Canada. Like I'm I've never stayed up till three a.m. watching the feeds until I started watching season four. Of Canada on the feeds, um, like it's what makes this show great is like watching the feeds, um, getting interacting with the fandom, getting to like subscribing to one of the people that I would have never not or never have watched unless Canada came along, which was reality recaps. Like shout out to the, shout out to them because I know they work their ass off and. It's it's what makes this show great. It's like, um, it's like I remember going to, like the taping, and then it's so weird to have people that you, that are similar to you, um, who love the show as much as you do, but you are just uh, like we all have our own little social groups. So it's sort of weird, like being in a room with people who love the show as much as I do, and it's it's something that I never really gotten to experience, and went until I went there. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so grateful that I got to go to the live taping. I got to watch the show. I had the opportunity to um, have, like, started to pick a Reddit flair, enter a trash draft, enter, um, like, see all these challenges go down and, like, get into sort of, like, the mind of people psychologically on how this show is and why I love it so much. Um, what else? Like season one. Season one was like, because I backwatched it all, and then I, season one sort of was, wasn't the classic season, but it just got us off the ground. It made us love the show. It made us the Topaz moment where she screwed up the vote because she thought it was vote to evict, but no, it's vote to win. Um, such a great moment where she's trying to get Arissa to change the vote, but she's like, Arissa's like, no, nah, mm -mm, I ain't doing that. Um, we got legal stuff around this. 
uh, like, uh, it went else about season, season one, we had, like, the, the season of showmances where a lot of the season was taken off, um, by one big alliance and how certain people worked around that and, like, um, and, like, a relationship with Peter and, like, sort of like a, it made me love Peter not for the cocky asshole that he was on the side show, but for the house guest that he was, because it's like, um, you have to see past people's characters that they play, and like I learned that from like Parhar from watching a podcast that he did with Dan Giesling. It's like, it's just a character, like, and then you have like, it just made me understand the game more and more from like a casting perspective, from a, um, from like a uh, perspective of like why it's so different now when you enter the house in the first week and why it's so important that the first week gets shown yet versus why it's not and why um and just how interesting it is um i i love this show like in, season one was an amazing season for just it being that it, it was the first it wasn't the best in my opinion but it may have been better for you in your opinion it, it like I love Gary, I love Peter, I love all the housemates in season one that did something to um, change the game, that um, that brought it to Canada, brought it to season two, season three, season four, season five, having Gary come back in season five, having the sideshow come, come and everything, it was just, I'm so grateful to have this show and s see how it sort of evolved over the five years that it is. Um, season two is what I call the classic season. You have John Party, you have uh, Netta, you have um, Allison, you have um, uh, the Gremlins, um, uh, what else, Kenny, all these great characters. Like, it's so just great to relive it. Like, watching it back. I remember watching it on YouTube where it was like they'd screw around with it just so it's not copyright infringement but it's sort of not and like it was sort of hilarious to watch it because I remember watching the whole series in like two days and just being like oh my gosh this is amazing um, and seeing people's opinions talking about the game talking about someone like Netta someone who back who got backstabbed at the last minute um, Sabrina do you want a live TV? Is this what you want? Great moments like that. It's like, are you kidding me? Like, it's it's why I love this show. Is you have these great, genuine moments. And it's... Uh, it's something that I really love and um, cherish for. Because it's, it's not like, oh, you're doing... Um, like, season two is like the classic season for me. Because everybody sort of got along. No one really tried to kill each other. Nobody really tried to um, murder each other. It was just a great season because it was like their family. And even though they had to attack each other and evict each other, all that um, put aside, like you have these great genuine moments, like Adele praying and then like, um, like for his faith and like uh, I think it was Andrew. I don't even know. I I forgot. I can't. I can't believe I forgot the guy's name. But the um, that one guy um, came and like they prayed together and it's just beautiful moments like that. Uh, like you can't underestimate the power this game has. And like season like season two was a classic season for me because it was just everybody got along. By the end of the game, it was just sort of like okay, like it was. It's a game, but it's also a family. Like and I that's how I felt when watching season two. Season 3 was the first season I watched as said before and it just I love the steampunk season. I love all the twists. I loved all the um craziness that was there. The triple eviction was insane, hilarious, sad, um crazy. I still love Willow. Still wish that if this show comes back, she will come back with it if she can. Um just great moments like um Season 3, like, Godfrey making it to the end, and yet he's sort of, like, he's a player that gets praised yet um, pooped on, because it's, like, what kind of game did he actually play? And it's, like, it's amazing to see how um, a lot of people view his game, and I think I liked his game. I didn't hate his game. I didn't, like, 
it was sort of funny and random. You had the chop shot at chop shop at the beginning of the season uh, with Greg. With she, I shook Greg's hand. That was such a great moment. It's like I remember walking up to him after the live taping and we're taking pictures with like the whole cast and like. I, I shook his hand and I was like, fuck, his hand was strong. That's all I remember about him and be, him being like all huge and muscly and shit. And I just like, I remember it's just like, oh my God, that's gray right there. And then it's like, uh, yeah, I remember him telling me, it's like, just stay in there. I'm just like, okay, good. Um, like just those moments because it was just hilarious. Um, what else? I had season four, like season four, um, Season four was the one I went to the taping for, and it was just that season was amazing. That was my favorite season because it was the first season I actually delve into the fandom. I started watching different seasons. That's when I started watching Australia, UK, um, like US, and like it got me so. I, I remember being in school. I know my marks dropped because I'd start. I would start studying and then I'd start watching the feeds because fuck it, school got boring. Um, uh, I remember watching the feeds and like, um, my favorite feeds moment was Nick and Phil shaving. Like Nick Phil, or um, I think it was um, Phil getting his head shaved by Nick, and his uh, uh like they're just talking and stuff. And then Mitch and Raul come in with like whipped cream and start having a whipped cream fight, and the house went crazy. It's just, just this random moment where they're running around trying to get each other hit with whip, whipped cream, moisturizer, all that crazy shit. And it was just like something I just loved. I couldn't help but not watch. It. And then them, Nick and Phil just go and back and uh, just. Just sort of, although they had whipped cream on their face, just go back and she is giving each other haircuts. And that was just such a great moment. And then you have Kelsey, who was my Reddit player, who was so happy to see come back in the game. And although she made it to Final Two, I honestly think that she played a better game because she manipulated the brothers and all. Um, Jaren, I know she wasn't the best and most well-liked. I love Maddie because she was such a great player. Ramsey, I want this show to come back so his ass can get back on back into the house. Because honestly, bro, you, I, I know your father was going through shit and I completely understand. He needed to get his ass out that house in that moment. I would have done the exact same thing. But... Honestly, let's get this show back and let's get his ass back in that house because that's what you fucking do. Um, Ramsey, Ramsey was like, I remember tweeting out of something about Ramsey and his mom replied back and just, or um, it was a poll. I did like a Twitter poll and I'm like, oh, who do, who do you think is going to win? And then she tweets back, it's like my son and then comma Ramsey. And I'm just like freaked out for the whole fucking night because it was like, damn. She's looking at Twitter. She's like, it made me understand why these families are so passionate because it's like, they're that's your family member in the house. You want to see what's going on with the audience, with everything. And it made me love the show even more because you have those moments where you're on Twitter and something crazy happens. I remember t talking to Arissa Cox doing a whole Twitter, Twitter conversation, being like, do you think they're ready for the tr double eviction? And she's like, well, I don't know. Like, they may, like, if they're not, then they're not. And then I remember seeing Evil Dick seeing that tweet and him saying something about that. Like, him being like, there, nobody's ever ready for, like, a double eviction or something. And it was just such a great moment to see because, like, I love that because it was, like, that's how, that's why I love this show because you're just watching the show and, like, you're in the experience. You're not just a part. You're, you don't need to be in the house to play the game. You're playing the game outside the house, talking and theorizing about what the people in the house are thinking about. Because it's just, oh, just amazing. I'm so, I was so happy about that. Season, season four will be far, will be my favorite season far out. Like it's it just, it, like that's it. Like, uh, it's a fandom. It's watching the feeds in the middle of class because shit's got boring. Um, talking to people about Big Brother Canada and why I love this show just to random strangers because really, that's what the fuck I want to do. And it, it just, some, it was something I love. Like, it's, it, it's something I'm passionate about because it's like I've been through a lot of this experience. Like, I remember seeing that house and being like, I'm either going to get in that house 
um, I'm talk talking about when I went to the taping, I just saw it, I'm like, told my friend, I'm like, yo, I'm either going to get my ass in that house as, like, a housemate, or I'm going to be a media person, um, and do interviews at the end of every season. So, yeah, that's another, um, and that was just, like, it was a funny moment, because it's, like, it's never going to happen. Like, me getting in the house, that's not going to happen, and then being a media, um, media person, like, probably not going to happen because I don't have a lot of confidence. This is why I'm just going to post this video up on YouTube <laughs> right after I'm done it. Um, but yeah, I was just, that's what I loved about it. And then season five came around. I remember I was in, um, I was in accounting class and I knew I was going to fail this one test. Um, so I, uh, ended up, um, I remember turning on my phone right after going on Instagram and seeing all the um, season, all the um, house guests getting revealed, and seeing that newbies were come, uh, newbies were there, and then also that um, that vets were coming back. I freaked out that Neto was coming back. I was like trying not to fucking cry because it was just so amazing that vets were coming back. Season five, they weren't doing no all stars BS. They were gonna do it half vets, half newbies. And I love that. And then I love seeing the Odyssey set. I love seeing the um, rocket that they would come out of each season. The um, the house was phenomenal. Beautiful house. I love the whole sci-fi theme. Um, so happy that people like Dylan, Emily, um, Dre, William, they had... Um, like, Dre, William, like, all these newbies came and, like, weren't um, afraid to change the game. Like, you have someone like Dre and William. They were speaking French on the feeds and everybody was freaking out. Even me. And it was hilarious. So I just start. It was funny, too, because I just got, like, a couple apps. So I just, like, tried to do voice translation or, like, um, uh, tried to learn French to see what they were talking about. And it was just hilarious. Having the Dre exposed party the night I'm... Uh, I have like a test or something. I remember watching the feeds and, or watching Twitter go through and everything, and then the hashtags for Dre Exposed Party, and I was just like, "Yo, get on the feeds!" That was crazy. I remember watching that, and it was just like Dylan talking to um, Ika and, and Dimitri, and Karen talking to them, and it was just like it was the night of the double eviction or the triple eviction, and. For me, it was like, what's what are we gonna do? Like, um, like what what's gonna happen? Because it was just so crazy. And I remember the um, tweeting out like saying something like, all this stuff on the feeds isn't gonna co show up tomorrow because they already got that shit going. And it's gonna be it's gonna. I remember seeing all those moments with Dre, William, um, and uh, uh, Ika, Dimitri, uh, Dimitri, um, Dylan, Karen them on the feeds and like everything going crazy the house just exploding ah just such a legendary moment Nettie getting evicted on the double eviction phenomenal television Heika you're gonna go home and it's like yeah I know Nettie's being a cocky bee and like yo I'm so happy that like those moments where I was promising your ass that like, you are going home. And it's like, yes, queen. That's how you do it. You know, like... Although a lot of these vets flopped and not fluttered, they... it went, It's what made that season amazing. It's like, the feeds weren't that bad. Like, feeds weren't, like, amazing, but it was like, you get these genuine moments um, when you, um... Like, staying up till 3 a.m. watching the button competition... Where they had to stand there and like Dylan running and grabbing food and like like Kevin using that as a strategy. I remember Dre hitting her button and then running up the stairs and it was just like it was just like something I couldn't fathom. And then it was just it was funny because it was like um, seeing this whole competition play out on the feeds. I didn't stay until Dylan won, but I remember going to sleep around two or three ish and it was just like it was insane. Like the only other competition I watched like that on the feeds was the sword competition and over the top where um, Alex won. Yeah, Alex. I think Alex or Morgan. Um, I'm pretty sure Alex, so. But, like, those moments where you're standing there watching the feeds trying to figure out what each other's motives are. 
And it was just like, damn. Um, and like you see Bruno come back, and Bruno was like a huge social player, and he played it. A, a somewhat different version of his game and then you have um like Kevin Kevin winning the game with Karen that Kevin that Kevin fucking Martin um I, uh, what was it it was like um I don't even know at this point I'm just like too um jumbled to try like the, just like Karenisms like how she wants Kevin out because uh cause like really like Ke Kevin she felt like Kevin didn't really deserve to win compared to Ike or Dimitri and like just those moments like that you see the first HOH still in the game until final two great moment because um like it's never happened a like making big brother history with the first guy out of the house in um in the Cana in a Canadian I think North American series too as well like, just those moments in Season 5 were legendary, and I'm so happy. And, like, although the emoji thing didn't work out, which is really stupid, in my opinion, um, and, like, they over-advertised it and everything, it was a good season, and I was so happy to see it. And, I, like, although I didn't have time to make it to the taping, I, I was so happy to have this season, to have um, Aika, Dimitri, um, play the game, and having... Um, uh, like, Emily played the game, which was a bit weird, but, like, just all these players, and, like, um, uh, play the game, and, like, be, um, <laughs> I remember watching the feeds and seeing the Six Alliance form with Neda, Dimitri, Aika, um, and, like, all the vets and stuff, like, I remember watching that in the Have Not Room, and then seeing it in the episode, and be like, fuck, that was an important moment, and then just, like, you have those moments where you're watching the feeds and then you see it on the show it's like that's the thing with Canada it's I, I was so happy for those moments and like it, it's just so surreal like um I remember watching the feeds and like um Kevin being like so Karen is that final two deal still going on and then she just go off on him and I could not stop laughing and like it's just those moments of why I love this show and why I want, I want to see it back in 2018 and, uh, but if not 2019 because you have a great host, some great, a great cast, great house guests, great house, great competition, and honestly, it's not even about the house or the competition. Um, like, uh, like it's it's the whole idea of it being a reflection on society, and it being a reflection on. Um, the house, uh, like, on, on people alone, like Sarah Hanlon said it best, like, it's a microchasm of life, and that's what I love about this show, is, like, it is a microchasm of life, and how people function in society, and I'm so grateful that I had this opportunity to, um, rant about this on my phone, um, trying to get this sh show back on, and I hope that if someone from Chorus does see this, I hope that you don't block me, you don't do anything kind of stupid or anything. Just know that, like, this is a super fan that doesn't like to, <laughs> like, doesn't like to go outside that often because, really, I'd rather not get a tan and watch the feeds. <laughs> um, I'd rather theorize about the different Big Brothers going on right now. I'd rather, um, do a bunch of crazy stuff if someone from Chorus or um, Global was watching this, I hope that you see that I, I'm someone who's that passionate about this show. I'd love to see this show back. Because it's not just a um, show, it's a, like, a, a show. It's a real um, look into life. And it's important to see that like this fan base can expand. If you There's ways that you can have this show back and make it profitable, make it um, good for uh, it to run like you just look how the American series has done it um, so yeah like I hope that if you're seeing this if you're watching this if you're um, if you've gotten to this point so far that you see how passionate I am and how know that there's more of me more of other people like me 
that love this show and if you can use a hashtag Save Big Brother Canada. Um, try to let's try to get this show back. Let's um, let's try to, if not anything. I know I'm gonna look like an idiot doing or like I sort of feel like I'd, I'll feel like an idiot watching this back in five years. But right now I know that I love this show. I love what the show is and what it represents, and I don't want this to be the first pig in the um, Big Brother series to have the domino effect for other series. I want this passionate fan base that loves this show as much as I do and I hope that if you're seeing this YouTube video, um, tweet, get the message out, talk on a video, like make your own video like this and talk about why you love this series, why you love Big Brother Canada and why you do want to see it back. Don't be afraid to use your voice. Like, let's get it loud. Let's get it heard. Like, till 2019, um, I hope to rant about Big Brother in the future. So thank you for watching. Like, if feel free to comment. Feel free to like. Like, subscribe. Even though I will probably not be posting a lot of YouTube videos. Because I don't have a lot of confidence. But still, feel free to do that. Um, and yeah. Thank you for listening and spread the message.